What's up guys, it's Ron again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marina. I've got a quick gear review for you, and today we're gonna to actually be testing out a light from a company called Vastfire. Now those guys over there, they were gracious to send me this light and asked me to do some testing on it for them. Um, and in the past, anytime that we test lights, we try to give the product the, the benefit of the doubt. We try to do this in warm, clear water where you can really see the product at work. Um, and we've kind of, changed a little bit and we want to start using these products in our local environments and where we typically dive a lot just to see how they'll hold up because if I use a product it's say in warm clear water and tell you that it's going to be great for you and then you get into an area where there's a lot of turbid water it may not be the best product for that particular environment so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to show you this light and show you the testing that we did with this light here in our local environment because it's pretty stingy here you know we're lucky if we have a couple feet of visibility this time of the year um, and even during the daytime we're basically not diving so we took this lot out we did a little bit of testing with it and I want to show you those clips but also at the same time I want to kind of open it up and show you everything that actually comes with this lot so let's take a closer look all right guys so taking a closer look you'll see it does come in this little green plastic hard shell case um, the case in itself is not what we're going to be reviewing but i typically base my reviews based off the packaging that it comes in and i like the harder shell uh, cases that come with dive lights today i think they really protect them uh, the hinges on them they're kind of poorly designed i mean they're just flimsy little hinges uh, i could see that the case would be rendered useless if the hinges broke so but the little clips here we're just going to pop them open open up see what all comes in the case uh, I can immediately see that we got a light we got a charger we got some uh, spare parts here o-rings things like that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull them out we're gonna look at each piece individually and then I'll show you some clips where we've already used this light say in a search and recovery scenario and I'll talk about the pros and cons or what I like and what I actually disliked about it so it looks like we got a little two port charger here uh, we do appear to have two 18 650 batteries um, so that's very common today with most uh, a lot of dive lights. We've got the light itself, pretty neat little compact design. Uh, looks like we got some spare O-rings and it appears to be two O-rings here. Um, so I'm gonna automatically assume this light, uh, once again guys, I've already used it, but I, when I see this to begin with, I'm gonna assume it's not a twist design because with most dive lights today, now you're gonna have three O-rings versus two. So I'm gonna say, since it's got a little push button here that that's the only purpose of the two O-rings versus three. And then of course, we've got a little bit of silicone grease here. It looks like it's just a little glob in there. Uh, when you replace O-rings and lights, it doesn't take much grease. So this little grease or a little bit of grease here should last you a very, very long time. So let's set this aside. Let's take a look at each component real quick. Um, like I said, starting with the batteries, I like the fact that they sent two batteries for it. Um, that way you can always have one charged up, ready to go, and then of course you got the one that you're going to put in your light itself. Now the charger itself, I'm, I'm a little uh, on the fence on. Uh, the charger, there's nothing actually wrong with a ch uh, charger. I've got several of these battery chargers like this. But what I, I'm not too keen on is they only sent a USB charger. So they don't even send a wall charger with it. Uh, you're gonna have to buy actually an adapter um, that is separate so that you can plug into a wall if you need to. However, if you say if you're that traveling diver and you don't have a lot of plug-in ports, maybe you just got, you take your laptop with you or something, you can just plug straight into your computer through the USB port and of course charge your batteries. Now, with that being said, eventually you gotta charge your laptop too. So I really wish they would have sent either a wall charger or a wall charger adapter so they could use the plug right into it as well but that's the charger uh, once again grease is grease there's a lot of different silicone lubes out there and then the two spare o-rings now getting into the light itself it's a very very light or uh, just it's not heavy at all it's analyzed aluminum um, and very small light and I'm gonna assume that the one battery just at first glance is not gonna make that big a difference in weight so as I stated, it does come with a push button design. Um, and, and I've kind of went through the years where I like the push button, I like to twist on, I go back to liking the push button. It's all personal preference. Um, it's really up to you which one you like. One of the problems I find, and I typically will use the twist head designs, but one of the problems I find with twist head is if you turn it off just to the point um, that you don't break the o-ring seals the deeper you go you know through Boyle's law that pressure is going to increase and it's going to turn your light on so if you're using it as a backup uh, those twist on lights can still come on sometimes this is pretty um, 
pretty secure either turning it on and off. It does come with a lanyard hole, but one thing I didn't notice in the case, there's no lanyard. There's no wrist strap or anything like that. Um, me personally, I always tie bolt snaps, and one of the things that you're going to see throughout these clips is I actually have a bolt snap tied to mine so that I can actually clip it off when I'm not using it. So yeah, I kind of wish they would have sent some way to secure the light. But let's go ahead and get it opened up, get the battery installed, and then we'll talk about the features of it, uh, the lumens, all that, and then kind of go from there. So it just takes one of the 18650 batteries here. Like I said, always have one charged up ready to go, and of course you can be using one. Just simply twist the head of it down, and then we're gonna operate it, and this one automatically comes on. But we're gonna operate it with this little push button here. So if I push the button, I can push it, I can go to a high beam, I can go to a low beam, and I can, of course, turn it off. Now this one also has a strobe feature. So if you take the button, turn it on, and then press and hold the button, it'll actually go into a strobe as well. And then you can go back to the light, cycle through, and then turn it off. So the specs of this lot's pretty simple. It's, it comes in almost at the thousand looms at the, at the high lumens. It's actually 980 looms on the high setting, which gives you about two hours of runtime. And then at the low settings, you're gonna get about 360 looms, and that's about two hours. And then on the strobe feature, it goes back up to whichever beam you're in, either the high beam or low beam, and you're gonna have about five hours of strobe time on there. So. All in all, it's a decent light as far as lumens. My minimum for a primary light, what I personally like, is typically around the 1,000 lumen mark. To say that 980 lumens is not quite a 1,000, that's true, but would I call this a 1,000 lumen light? Sure, that's basically what I would call it. It would work as a primary light for me personally due to its compact size. I think I would rather have this as a backup light than a primary light. But if it was all I had, definitely it would be a great primary light. Now, that being said, it's really gonna be dependent upon what type of diving you're doing. If I was gonna use this as a primary light, I'd probably get two or three of them, run them in series together, um, and it would be great for that. It is about a one inch uh, diameter shaft here, so you can very easily put it on a glove or something like that if you wanna make it hands-free. Um, once again, it's still very light. With that, just that one simple battery, it's still very light. Uh, light um, light if you will um, I personally use this one for a search and recovery dive during the daytime and when we were trying to decide where we wanted to test this lot we actually chose our local environment here our local lake because that's where most of our divers dive anyways and if we want to promote a product we want to be able to promote a product that's going to work here in our environment. So basically what we did is we took this out on a search and recovery dive during midday time. Uh, and you get about 40 feet down in our lake about midday, obviously you're not going to be able to see nothing. So we wanted to test it here in our local environment. And I got to admit, it was actually very impressive. Even if it was on the high or the low beam, one thing that I noticed there was actually two beams. You had a spot beam and you also had a flood beam. So that's going to help cut through a lot of the turbidity in the water. And it's also going to help lighten up the entire area without having that glare, that flashback into your mask. So I really, really like that feature about this. Once again, it was easy to operate. I did tie a bolt snap onto the end so that I could just simply clip off anytime that I needed to if I wasn't using the light. And then even when I found the object that I was looking at and I got the light close enough, like I said, I didn't really have that kickback. Now the camera's gonna kinda look like it's kicking back on my hand, but when that light's getting diffused throughout the water column, you're not gonna really have that kickback effect. So it's not gonna be much glare or flashback in your mask. But all in all, it's a decent dive light. Would I say it would be my primary dive light? Probably not. I would definitely probably use it as a backup light. Um, and as I stated before, I'm kind of on the fence about push buttons. I used to really like them. I went, you know, I've kind of swip swapped over the years. I used to like the twist heads and I went to the push buttons and I like the magnetic switches. Um, and then I went back to the twist heads and primarily now I only use twist heads, but I do kind of like this. Now talking about the button real quick and then I'll end this review out. This actually has a, a LED that lights up around the button. So on the high beam, the LED is actually gonna be green in color. And I'm not sure if the camera's gonna show it or not, but underwater is actually gonna glow green around it. Now that's usually from uh, say 100% to a 30% battery power. When you get below 30%, that green LED is actually gonna turn red and that kind of lets you know that your battery's dying. And then 
say between 30% uh, to 10% is the red, and then anything below 10% to let you know that your battery's dying, it'll actually flash red. So that'll let you know, hey, it's time to definitely change your battery, get your new one out and charge this one. Um, as far as, is that a little too much for this slide? Is it just an uh, added feature that you don't really need? That's gonna be a personal preference. I can tell you right now, anytime that you have a dual loom light, when you go from the high beam to the low beam and you didn't personally change it from high beam to low beam, that means your battery's dying. So it's, it's kind of a redundant uh, system there. Um, but what that would come in handy for is during daytime operations, if you're just testing the light to see, um, you know, is your battery charged or whatnot, you can immediately tell whether it's charged. And this one is actually, I'm not sure if the camera shows it, it's actually showing red around the indicator there. So that kind of lets me know that that battery is fixing to die. And since I can still scroll through both the high beam and the low beam, that's going to let me know that even on the low battery, you should still be able to have the high beam. So I'm going to put the other battery in and see if it glow green for us so it is a neat little feature um, it'll let you know you know that right there is a prime example yeah that one's actually glowing green there I don't know if you can see it. if you look right around the, the button you'll see the green instead of the red so that is a neat little feature it kind of lets you know before your dive when you're on land um, what your battery power is at so that that I'll, I'll retract what I said that's actually not redundant in my opinion that's actually a pretty cool feature there but guys this is the vast fire deep dive light uh, it's pretty cool just a quick little note about the bulb it's a Cree XM L2 U4 LED they do take well, a single 18650 battery comes with two batteries comes with a charter or a charger comes with two o-rings spare o-rings and of course silicone lube as well and it's a lot very light light it's not heavy at all would I would I recommend this to you divers as new divers absolutely it's a great lot to check out if you got any questions on this there'll be a link down in the description below just click that link and you can find out all the information about it uh, if there's anything I left out that you're curious about you can drop me a comment down below and I'll try to answer it the best I can but all in all I give it a 7 out of 10 if they would have gave me a clip or a lanyard or something I'd probably give it an 8 or a 9 out of 10 but yeah it's definitely a good lot something that you probably want to check into but guys if you like this review simply smash that like button for me definitely share it as well as always make sure you follow us on instagram and twitter like us on facebook pin us on pinterest subscribe to us here on youtube and as always guys we appreciate your business guys we really appreciate you watching our videos if you liked it make sure to give us a big thumbs up if you're not a subscriber simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications if you want to see some other cool videos make sure to click these links here they could be scuba tips they could be diving videos search and recovery videos or gear reviews once again, guys, we really appreciate it.